We can easily calculate the percentage change from one period to the next in a pivot table and give us some visual indicators using conditional formats, which I'll show in this video. I'll also explain why it's not mathematically correct to represent a change from zero to any other number as 100% change, which I know is controversial because our gut tells us that a change from zero to something should be quantifiable and we want to show this somehow, but it's just not right to say it's 100%. I've got some sales data here for different categories by month, and I want to calculate the percentage change from one month to the next. Now my business is new, it just started in January 2021, so there's no prior data to compare January to. I'll start by inserting a pivot table, and I'll put it on this sheet called Pivot. And let's bring the pivot table field list over closer. So I want to look at the sales by month, now it's automatically grouped them here. I'm just going to control Z to undo that grouping, right click and add my own grouping just so that it groups the months and then they have the correct month name rather than the dates. Let's also format the cells here because I don't like big numbers with decimal places and no commas. So let's add that. Now for the percentage change, I'll add the sales field again to the values area. It doesn't matter about the formatting here because I'm going to change it. This is going to be my percentage. I'm going to right click, show values as, and here I want percentage difference from. In the dialog box, I want the base field as the month and the base item is the previous month. Now let's add some conditional formatting to make it easier to read. And for that, I need some values to base it on. So I'll add the sales again. And we'll also set this one up to show values as percentage difference from. And it's going to be exactly the same, but this time I'm going to add conditional formatting here. So on the home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, icon sets, and I want these triangles. And let's just make sure it's going to be applied to all cells showing sum of sales three values for month. And that way, as this pivot table grows, it will automatically have that conditional formatting applied. Now notice that there are some neutral yellow icons. We want to change the formatting to simply show a green up triangle for positive changes and red down triangles for negative changes. So I'm going to edit the rules. So under conditional formatting, manage rules. I'll double click to open the rule. And in here, I want to change this to number and this one to number and we'll leave them at zero. Now, I don't want to see the values that have the icon, so let's show icon only. And okay, let's center the icons and we'll give these columns a new name. So this one's going to be percentage and this one's going to be change. And we'll just format that so it's left aligned. Let's make the columns a bit narrower and now they appear as one. Now remember my data is by category, so let's add a slicer for the category. Right click, add a slicer. It's hiding behind the field list. Let's move it over here. And we can make it a bit narrower. So there's my categories. Now when I select a category from the slicer, you can see the pivot table automatically updates. Now, as a precaution, just in case some months have no data, I'm just going to right click and go into the field settings. And on the layout and print tab, I'm going to show items with no data so that I always have all the months. Now notice it's showing null errors. So if you have a month with no data, it's going to result in null. And we can hide them by right clicking and going into the pivot table options. And then for error values, I'm just going to leave it blank. So now the errors are gone, but we also have these less than and greater than dates. And that happens when you group your dates, which we have grouped by months. So let's get rid of those. I'm just going to filter them out. Okay, that's better. Now notice January has no percentage change. Remember, we don't have any data prior to January. This is a new business. But this leads me on to discussing how a change from zero should be represented. Some would argue that the percentage change in January should be represented as 100%, but that's not mathematically correct, and it doesn't give the user a realistic indication of the change. Let's look at some examples and you'll see what I mean. 
First, let's look at the formula for calculating the percentage change, which is to find the difference between period two and period one divided by period one. We can see here with the example in period one of 50 increasing to 100 in period two, which is a 100% increase. However, if we take the change from no sales in period one, which in my case would be December, to 100 in sales in period two, we get a formula error because you cannot divide by zero. Now the correct way to represent this change is to return NA or dash. And this guides the user to look at the absolute values rather than comparing percentages. You can see here I've used the if error formula to return NA or a dash, or some even argue that anything above zero is infinitely higher than zero. And they therefore like to use the infinity symbol. However, in finance, I believe it's better to direct the reader to focus on the absolute values. Some suggestions I've seen making the rounds are to use a nominal value like one to force a calculation. The problem with this is it yields misleading results. For example, if we compare the percentage change from zero to 100 by putting a one in P1, which forces the calculation to return a result rather than an error, you can see we get 9,900%. If you compare that to a change from 50 to 150, which is an absolute change of 100, you get a 200% change. I think you'll agree that comparing the percentage change results here gives the user the wrong impression, and this is therefore the wrong solution. The most popular solution is to simply enter 100% change when there's no data for P1 or P1 is zero. If we look at the change from 100 to 400, we get a 300% change. That is P2 increased by three times the P1 value. If we compare that change to a change from zero to 1000 and force 100% as the change, we're implying that the improvement here is not as large or as good as the first example. Similarly, if you compare 100% in here and here, we're not showing that the fourth example is 10 times better than the third. And this is why it's wrong to force a result for the percentage change when the starting point is zero. You'll find that company financials simply enter NA or a dash when the percentage change can't be calculated. And I encourage you to do the same as much as it might bug you. Negative changes can be a bit of a mind bender. So let's look at some examples. The first example goes from 100 to negative 50, which is a negative 150% change. We can see how it calculates by feeding the P1 value into the formula in reverse. So 100 plus 100 times negative 150% results in 100 plus minus 150. So you can see that equals minus 50. Example two starts at negative 50 and goes to 100 which is a negative 300% change. Now you might be expecting this to be a positive change. After all, it's gone from a negative value to a positive value. But if we understand the math, you can see it's a reduction from a starting point of minus 50 plus negative 50 times minus 300%. And we know that multiplying two negatives make a positive to give minus 50 plus 150. If we look at example three, you might not expect it to return the same percentage change as example two. But again, if we look at the math, you can see that 50 plus 50 times minus 300% yields 50 plus minus 150. Example four is two negatives that return a positive 100% change because P2 is double P1 or 100% more than P1. And lastly, example five is negative 100 that is P2 is 100% less than P1. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful and won't make the mistake of labeling percentage change from zero as 100%. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.